UV unwrapping is way easier than you think. If you've been struggling with it or feel overwhelmed, don't worry, I've got you covered. In this video, I'll teach you everything you need to know about UV unwrapping, step by step, so you'll never have to watch another tutorial again. Let's break it down. What is UV unwrapping? You might have a basic understanding of UVs, but let me clarify it in the simplest way. UV unwrapping is a process of taking a 3D object and unfolding it into a 2D layout. Kind of like cutting and flattening a cardboard box. This flattened version allows us to apply texture accurately without stretching or distortion. If you skip UV unwrapping, your texture will be like all over the place. Stretched, broken, or completely messed up. So mastering this process is essential for high quality 3D models. Imagine this. Think of a rolled up chart paper, glued at both ends. If you want to flatten it, you grab a scissor, cut along a line, and spread it out. Now you have a flat surface. You can draw or do something. In 3D modeling, it works the same way. Let's take a cube. You don't have a scissor, but you do have a tool called mock seam. When you mark an edge as seam, Blender highlights it in red. This tells Blender, hey, cut along this line. Once marked, Blender knows exactly where to split and flatten the model. Just like unrolling the chart paper. Let's see how to unwrap the cube in Blender step by step. First, to check if the UV mapping is working correctly, I'll add a grid texture material to the object. For the cube, it looks great. By default, Blender's UV unwrapping does a good job and the texture appears evenly distributed and aligned. Now let's try this with a cylinder. I link the same material to it. However, this time, you'll notice the texture isn't even. The grid is stretched in some places and appears uneven scaled in others. This is why unwrapping becomes essential. To fix this, imagine the cylinder as a rolled chart. First, we need to cut the top and bottom pieces. So I'll select the edges and mark them as seams. Next, to flatten the curved surface of the cylinder, we need an opening. I'll choose one edge running along the side and mark it as seam. Now, check out the result. The texture looks much better, the grid is more even and properly aligned. If you go to the UV editor, you'll see how Blender has converted the cylinder into a 2D layout. With practice, you'll develop a natural sense of where to place seams, making your UV mapping look realistic and clean. Now that you understand how to apply UVs to a simple shapes, let's level up. Take a look at this gun model. How would you unwrap something this complex? It might be feel terrifying at first, right? Don't worry, I'll show you how it's done. It's not as complicated as it look. By the end of this video, you'll be confident enough to unwrap even the most detailed model. But before we get into that, let's talk about Smart UV. Smart UV is a tool in Blender that automatically unwraps your mesh. All you have to do is select your model, hit Smart UV Unwrap, and Blender does the work for you. Sounds like a magic, right? But here's the catch, it comes at a price. While Smart UV is fast and easy, it often plays seams in less than ideal locations, which can lead to stretch, texture, and uneven result. Let me show you an example. Here's the silencer from my gun model. The first one uses Smart UV. Notice how the texture looks uneven and less professional. The second one is my custom unwrap version. The texture are clean, even, and perfectly aligned. The difference is clear, isn't it? While Smart UV is convenient, it doesn't offer the precision or professionalism that manual UV unwrapping provides. So if you are looking to become a professional 3D artist, learning UV unwrapping is essential. However, you are in rush and just need a quick solution, Smart UV is a decent option. But remember, the easy path often comes at cost. Now, get ready to master UV unwrapping step by step. First. Let's learn how to apply UV grid material to your model. Go to shading mode and select the object you want to work on. Click add new material. Then add a node called image texture. Connect the image texture node to the base color input. At first it might be appear black, but don't worry. Click on new and from the option, select UV grid. This grid will help us to see how well the UV is unwrapped. Right now the UV looks perfect because I've already done the work earlier, but let's start from scratch to see the difference. Switch to edit mode, right click and choose clear scene. Now the texture looks messed up, 
This is what happens when the UV map isn't set up correctly. To apply the material across your model, select everything, press Ctrl plus L and choose Link Material. With this texture ready, I'll now teach you how to unwrap the model from scratch step by step. Shall we begin? So far, we work with easy shapes, but when it comes to complex shapes, we use a new technique to simplify the process. Selecting sharp edges. Here's how it's work. Go to select menu and choose select sharp edges. This automatically selects edges with an angle above 30 degrees, making the unwrapping process much easier. Now let's apply the seam. But before that, I want you to check if the live UV is enabled, as this allows you to unwrapping whenever time you make changes, so you don't have to unwrap again and again. Nice feature. Let's get back. With the sharp edge tool, you don't have to overthink about visualizing real world object or figuring out where to place seams manually, no headache. Just simplify the work. Step 2. Clean up seams. After selecting sharp edges, you might notice unwanted seams, especially in the areas like chamfers. Carefully remove these unnecessary seams, while ensuring at least one edge remains marked as seam for each selection. Now, let's check the UV map. Initially, it might look like a squashed cylinder shape, so what we need to do? Cut the cylinder. Step 3. Marking the cylinder loop. Since this shape including cylindrical area, we need to select one edge loop around the cylinder and mark it as seam. Now here's why I choose the bottom edge. When you mark an edge as seam, the texture will discontinue along the line. So it's always recommended to place seams in areas that are less visible or not prominently revealed in the final render. Once you mark the seam correctly, the UV map will flatten perfectly and you'll notice how the texture align much better and more natural across the surface. Now, I'm selecting one face of the cylinder and press L to select the linked face. Let's check how it looks in the UV map. It looks good, but there is a room for improvement. We need to remove a few unnecessary seams. For instance, on this side, there, is, there are seams causing texture discontinuation, which we want to avoid. Since we already have a seam at front, we can safely remove these extra seams. Notice how the fewer seams we have, the cleaner the UV map looks. One important thing to remember is that seams causing texture breaks, so they should be always kept minimal and placed in a less visible area. Look at how clean and seamless the result is after removing the extra seams. Now, let's figure out where we need to add seams. In the front, we have a multiple holes that need proper unwrapping, so to handle this, We'll select one inch loop around each hole and mark it as seam. By marking these seams, we essentially telling Blender to treat this area as separated selection. This ensures that the texture aligns perfectly around the hole without any stretching or distortion. Once you mark the seams for each hole, the UV layout will look much cleaner and more organized. Now let's take a look at the back of the model. It seems like there is a chamfer area, so we'll start by removing one of the edge seams there. At first, this process might be feel a bit confusing, especially when figuring out which edge needs to keep as seam and which one to remove. But trust me, with enough practice, this will become second nature to you. You don't have to aim for perfection. Just ensure that 80 to 90% of your UV texture is clean and distortion free. This model is finished. Let's see different part. Now, let's take a look at another part of the model. Again, we have a cylindrical shape. Let's use this opportunity for quick recap for the process. Step 1. Choose the sharp edges using the Select Sharp Edge tool and mark them as seams. Step 2. Remove unwanted seams. For instance, I select these chamfer edges, the middle edges 1, 2, 3 and 4 and the back edges, then remove their seams. Step 3. Select at least one edge in the continuous segment. In this case, I'll pick this edge. Ideally, you choose a less visible area for scene, but for demonstration purpose, I'll select this edge and mark it as scene. I hope this gives you more clarity on the process. Now let's move on to even more complex shapes. This shape looks a bit different from what we've dealt with earlier, but the process stay consistent. First, I'll identify the sharp edges above a 30 degree angle and mark them as scene. It's a good start, but we can make this cleaner. Next, I'll go ahead and remove all the unnecessary seams along the chamfer edges. This adjustment smooths out the layout and avoids any unwanted texture distortions. Looking closer, there is a large hole in the geometry. 
To address it, I'll remove the chamfer seams around the hole and select a single edge loop to mock a seam. This helps create a balanced UV layout. Lastly, at the bottom, I noticed two seams cutting through a continuous area. Since we only need one seam in the selection, I'll remove the extra one. With this adjustment, the unwrapping is clean and optimized. Now, if we add a metal texture to this model, everything will align perfectly, giving a polished and professional finish. Finally, let's tackle the most challenging shape to unwrap. This model has a lot of cuts, bevels, and intricate details. Let's give it a try. First, I'll mock the sharp edges as seam. This gives us a starting point, but it's far from done. The next step is to carefully remove unnecessary seams. When removing, it's crucial to leave one seam in continuous segment and place the seams in less visible area for a better result. As we clear unnecessary seams, you'll notice an immediate improvement in the UV layout. The fewer seams, the cleaner the texture. However, on one of the face, I can see the texture is stretched. This indicates something off. To investigate, I'll select all the faces and check the UV map. The problem, there's no opening seams for the selection, meaning Blender can flatten it properly. To fix it, I'll add a single seam in an inconspicuous area at the bottom of the model. And just like that, the texture aligned perfectly. Look at the before and after. It's a night and day difference. My advice, start practicing this technique on your project. Each model is unique and seam placement will vary, but the principle remains the same. Don't overthink it or procrastinate. Open any project you're working on and start unwrapping today. Trust me, it's easier than you think. For these deep cuts, a single seam is enough to achieve a clean UV. I place it on the top where it won't be visible. Think about it. If this is a game asset and the player is holding the gun, their hand would be covered at the bottom and the top seam will hardly ever been seen. That's why strategy placement of seams is so important. If the cut has multiple edges mocked as seam, simply remove all of them and keep just one seam. Overusing seam can disrupt the texture flow, so adding only one seam in the right spot keeps things clean and professional. Keep this in mind when handling detailed model. So that's how you can easily master UV unwrapping and work more effectively. I hope this video gave you clarity and boosted your confidence. If you have any doubts, or most of you do, list all your questions in the comment below. I'll go through every single one of them and upload a detailed follow-up video to answer them. Every comment counts, and your feedback is valuable. Thank you so much for watching, I'm truly glad you learned something new today. Remember, don't lose the momentum. Keep creating, keep pushing yourself, and stay ahead. I'll see you in the next one.